I don't know, is this working? Is it working? Maybe it's working, who the fuck knows? Okay, uh, so, filming are just the tips for a cheap, effective way of having a mounting point, particularly for your roller guns. And I thought I'd also attempt to do it as a live video, I'm not sure if anyone will watch it, but it's a good experiment. Okay, so, a lot of people with your aftermarket roller guns are hooking up your reel line to the trigger guard. Uh, that can cause a few issues. For one, if it's a very heavily powered gun, it's actually bending your handle downwards all the time. It also means that your rubbers are situated very close and in and around your reel. So what I prefer to do, particularly if it's a normal standard roller, is actually put a mounting bolt with hook line points through the handle. So first you've got to drill your hole. Uh, this one's easy, Rob Allen's easy. It's actually already got two existing holes where the handles would screw in. All you gotta do is drill that through. Now, before you drill a hole through your gun, just make sure your barrel plugs far enough up that if water gets in there, it's not actually gonna get all the way into your barrel. Sweet. Next step after that is go down the hardware shop or the marine supply shop or both, depending on what you wanna do and get some bits and pieces. Now, you can buy a kit to do this, which costs like 30 or $40 and it's essentially the same stuff. So you need one bolt, stainless 316 preferably. It can have a hex head, it can have a cup head, it can have a dome head, doesn't matter. As long as it's going to be long enough to fit through the handle with thingamabobs. A lock nut. Mmm, lock nut. Because without it, it can unwind and then everything goes to pot. And some of these. Window sash rollers. Designed for your cheap aluminium windows. It's the bit that goes on the bottom to make your window go one way or the other way. That's like $7. eBay, much cheaper. Don't know how to use eBay, so $7. All up, you're looking at about eight to nine dollars worth. Okay. Next, get out your little window rolly thingies, need that a dee dee, and stick them, the first one, onto the bolt. Now, you can pre drill them so they're a bit bigger. I like to just leave them as they are and just screw them on because the thread will slowly go through until it's all filled up. What are you holding now? A six pack. A six pack? Brilliant! What you do? Well, I figured out how to carry six beers at the same time. Carry six beers at the same time? Brilliant! Let's drink them. Also, I should probably point out, this isn't my gun. I'm merely doing this for a friend. But it should do the job. Uh, it's always best to be sure your mech can handle the pressure you're going to put under it. Okay, so... Now you can see, I'll show on the main camera, which will go up later on the GoPro, and on this camera, that the sash rollers have a groove. Now that groove is where you're going to have your mono or constrictor or dyneema or whatever you want to use loop sitting onto and sitting in that loop so it doesn't come out, particularly when it's under tension. Okay, and that goes in this hole. Ta-da! And see, now you've got a nice streamlined, grooved, point on the side of the gun where you can attach your rubbers to. And on the other side, put on the other little one. Spinny, 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 spinny. And screw that one down until it's flush. down flush and hard, ready for the next one, your lock nut. Lock nut goes on, winds up until it's tight. Because it's a lock nut, it shouldn't ever come undone. Two things are advantageous of using this system. The first one is that the force of your rubber is now acting in shear on the barrel. So instead of it pulling outwards on, say, a screw or pulling downwards on your handle, the force is directly pulling against the bolt, which is the whole way through your handle, giving you a lot more 
well, let's say resistance strength. Um, not an engineer, I don't know the right words, but hopefully that made sense. The other advantage is because each individual rubber hooks onto this with a loop on either side of your gun, similar to how Rob Allen's new roller guns are set up. When you're not using your gun, you can just unhook each side and completely remove the rubbers from the gun. It's gone. They're not connected together. There's nothing that means they're going to get stuck. You can take them out. Uh, let's say you're going on a reef trip, a long trip. You can have three or four sets of rubbers set up and just change them when one breaks. You don't have to re-tie them and pull them off. Also means that depending on how you set up your gun with pretension, etc, 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 you can easily adjust the length. So all you're doing is say have a loop in your rubber, length of Dyneema, and then tie off to that other end. You can get it so that you can just keep changing the length. It's, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to cut it, have it bang back. Uh, it also means you can only, if you're tying off the rubbers, you don't have to physically pull the strength and the amount of both rubbers at once to quickly tie off that knot with the right pretension. You can just do one side at a time. So much easier. So in short, stronger, easier to remove, and also your rubbers are now going to be pulling back up onto this point up here, which keeps them away from your reel and your reel line going away. So if you can imagine, they'll come and pull up beside your gun. Uh, it'll also redirect the force of the shot to the middle of your barrel instead of underneath your barrel. So in theory, it redirects those forces into a stronger position. Um, so that's all the reasons why this is a good way to do it for a single barreled gun. Um, it also costs like very little. Okay, here's another option. Principles the same how it all works. If you're using very big cord or you've got issues, um, for instance, the person who I'm doing this gun for hasn't got the best shoulder um, or back, you can use these big cleats that are designed for the lock off point for a shock bungee. You use them on boats all the time. Again, only about six, seven dollars. Cheaper on eBay if you know how to use it. Same principle. So that's just a different alternative. Does the same job, same principle, just different things. Uh, feel free, you can use all sorts of things to do it. So there you go. Rubbers are on so you can have a look. Now you can see that it's up and out of the way. Nothing's going to get in the way of your reel or your line release and the forces are being pushed back into the center of your gun. Also, if you break a set of rubbers or bust a set of rubbers or have something fail on a set of rubbers, you can pull them out, quickly swap them and you're back in the water ready to go as you'll see here. The other advantage to this is when you're not using the gun, if you are one of those people that likes to put your rubbers in the fridge, you can. Hopefully this has helped you out, and again, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Oh, well, I've been thinking, it might not be the smartest idea to drink six beers at the same time. Don't drink six beers at the same time! Brilliant! Brilliant!